Hello everyone, I'm Jensine Bard, and welcome to Testimony, where truth is told, lives are changed, and hope is given. Revelation 12:11 tells us that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. A testimony of your story for His glory. She has ministered on every continent around the globe, is an award-winning journalist and author of several books, including Miracles Among Muslims, The Wounded Lover, and Let Ishmael Live, just to name a few. She is also co-founder and host of the immensely popular The Jerusalem Channel, garnering millions of viewers from around the globe, and with the latest in world events, devotionals, and commentary, and all from a biblical perspective, and all from the center of it all, Jerusalem, Israel, where both she and husband co-founder Peter Darg call home, that is unless sequestered by a pandemic placing their feet on U.S. soil or in the U.K., their otherwise ministry locations. Wherever they are, both are unequivocally called to bring reconciliation between the Jewish and Arab people and prophetic healing and revival amongst all peoples. But that's not all. As you will soon hear, this evangelist, heralded Bible teacher, and named one of Israel's top 50 Christian allies by the IAF in 2020, has also partnered with another amazing ministry in bringing reconciliation and collaboration between Christians and Jews. How? Enter in Jonathan Feldstein, an Orthodox Jew, husband and father of six, who makes his home in Israel, founder of the Genesis 123 Foundation, and host sponsor of the Global Hanukkah Prayer for Israel, celebrating the miracles, which we will talk about today. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome to testimony a great joy and honor indeed, Christine Darg and Jonathan Feldstein. Christine and Jonathan, welcome to Testimony. Thank you. So Wonderful to be with you. Well, it's great to have you, and we are calling Jonathan in Israel, and I have no idea where you are right at the moment, Christine, but I'm so glad that all of us could connect today. Full disclosure, you are both treasured friends and previous testimony guests. Your stories incredible, your mission and ministries even more so. So let's get right to it, starting with you, Christine. How does a born-again believer in Yeshua meet an Orthodox Jew, and the two are now collaborating for global revival and prayer? And then, Jonathan, if you can elaborate on your upcoming global prayer event, how it all started and why partnering with Christine, a board member for your foundation, makes perfect sense. Christine. Well, all I can say is that we are living an absolute momentous prophetic time, and it's time for Orthodox Jews, such as Jonathan and myself, and evangelical Christians, to be friends, because we are family. We are the people of the book, and we have separated too often through circumstances throughout the history of the church, throughout unfortunately the history of anti-Semitism, but this is the hour when we're getting back together again and when we're collaborating in prayer because we believe the end time prophecy is being fulfilled and we have the privilege and the honor to be active in it. Jonathan. Well, for me, it, it, it begins with a probably what was my first visit in a church ever, and I guess that would be a funny way of starting a joke. What is an Orthodox Jew doing walking into a small evangelical church in Cleveland, Tennessee? Uh, but that was sometime in the late 80s when God tapped me on the shoulder and called me to be a bridge between Jews and Christians, and it's something that I've been able with tremendous excitement to weave into my life and to my career since then, and two and a half years ago, when we established the Genesis 123 Foundation, Christine was one of the first people I called. We've known each other for, for many years since I've 
been living in Israel, and and asked her if she would be a member of our board. And uh, it's just intuitive that people who share common interests, as well, as not just common interest in in um, building bridges between Jews and Christians, but of course common interest in all worshiping the God of Israel and having a common denominator in the land and the people of Israel. And uh, we're blessed that Christine is is uh, an invaluable part of our organization. Thanking you so much, Jonathan, for your gracious words. But it takes a lot more courage, Jensen, for someone like Jonathan to reach out the hand of fellowship to an evangelical Christian because of the history of the church and anti-Semitism. And I don't think that the average church member has a clue of how much faith and how much courage it takes for an Orthodox Jewish person to be a bridge builder with Christians. But I salute Jonathan for being on the front line in this new move of God. Amen and amen. And we are going to get more into the roots of anti-Semitism and what both of you are doing to overcome just that. But to begin with, can you share, or just to add, with our listeners, the meaning of the word Hanukkah as spelled H-A-N-U-K-K-A-H, why it is also spelled C-H-A-N-U-K-K-A-H, if I have that right, and why as Christians we should also be celebrating this very important Jewish holiday. Uh, Christine or Jonathan? Hanukkah derives from a Hebrew verb, meaning to dedicate. So different ways in English, it's basically a Hebrew word that is symbolic of a wonderful holiday that is actually mentioned in the New Testament, and it's mentioned in John chapter 10. And so I believe it's important for Christians to acknowledge the fact that that verse in John chapter 10 says it was winter and Jesus was in Jerusalem at the time of the festival of dedication, which is Hanukkah, and Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's colonnade. So why was he there? It's because he knew about the miracle of the Feast of Dedication, how the temple be dedicated, and how the miracle supply of oil had lasted for eight days. And the story of Hanukkah is actually preserved in the books of 1st and 2nd Maccabees, which describe in detail the rededication of the temple in Jerusalem and the lighting of the menorah again. Now, these books are not part of the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible used by modern Jews. But guess what? Much of the Christian world, including the Catholic and Orthodox churches, consider First and Second Maccabees as part of the Bible. And so we should be celebrating this holiday. And in doing so, one of the things that we achieve is that we're coming closer to our Jewish brethren by recognizing this very important holiday and it's exciting that Jonathan is brave enough he's planning this fantastic prayer during Hanukkah with Christian participating it's the first it's the first it's very exciting which brings me to my next question for either one of you you recently had a global prayer event and this speaks to the courage that you just alluded to Christine uh, of our friend and brother in Christ, Jonathan Feldstein. You recently had a global prayer event that sparked some online controversy. Can you dispel that for our listeners and then explain how the upcoming, quote, Hanukkah prayer for Israel, celebrating the miracles, end quote, will be different, or will it? Sure. So we, we, this, this year, like many people, we ended up having to take a lot of our activities virtual. In the summer, we established a program, wonderful program called uh, Inspiration from Zion, connecting Christians around the world with, with people, even if they were here, with whom they wouldn't necessarily have a connection to tell their story and provide inspiration in a world that needs some healing right now. Uh, we always do, but especially this year, it's been challenging for, for, for most people. And we, we established this program. Um, it's been going wonderfully successful. As a result of that, there's a pastor in Pakistan, of all places, a small Muslim country that does not have diplomatic relations with Israel, who contacted me and wanted to participate. 
and asked if she could pray. And I explained to her that it wasn't really the format, but that gave the seed for this idea to have Christians around the world praying for Israel. And that's what we, and that's what we launched in October, um, just on two months' notice, and that was uh, uh, built around the holiday Sukkot, or t- uh, Tabernacles. Um, we did a 13-hour non-stop prayer event that began in China, including some underground churches that were participating, which is so extraordinary on so many levels, and went all the way through Alaska and Hawaii, people p- praying in several different languages. Um, Jews and Christians coming together will, in, in, su- in such a, a capacity will always spark a degree of controversy. There are Jews who think that uh, we don't have any place praying with or participating with Christians in prayer, or, or for that matter, very much else. And there are Christians who think that they're, that we really don't have much to teach them and the Christianity that they know really doesn't need or, or, or is not so based on Judaism, and therefore a prayer event around, albeit around one of the biblical festivals, is not terribly relevant and does not speak to them. Um, and I'm grateful, it's humbling for... for uh, Christine, to speak of my bravery. I don't think of it as such. I just think of doing the right thing. But yes, indeed, there's a lot of pushback. And I'm one of the people who pushes back to push back. <laughs> and that's why we're having our global Hanukkah prayer. And I believe we're doing it somewhat different. We're doing several different segments around the world. So we can have different languages, different cultures, according to the time. And that begins this week. And, and I expect there'll be pushback. But I expect more than the pushback, there will be tremendous ways that we join in prayer and exalt God. Christine, this is for you, weighing in on what Jonathan just spoke about. Talk about the spiritual warfare that comes with trying to bridge the gap between Christians and Jews, and why, whether directly involved or not, prayer is so critical to the success of any such collaboration. Any setting to the move of God is going to come against tremendous amount of spiritual warfare because the Lord has his eternal purposes that continually unfold and the powers of darkness try to stop the move of God but we have to have clear vision, we have to see what the word of God says and then we have to align ourselves with the word of God and decide that we are going to be biblically correct and not just politically correct. And once we have made that decision, I'm speaking as an evangelical believer now, then we have to say, look, I'm in this for the long haul. I want to believe all of God's eternal purposes to come to pass. And I commit myself to everything that God says in his word is going to come to pass, no matter what the spiritual warfare is. But there's some people that God has put his hand upon uh, by his grace, such as myself, who has had visions, that had dreams, and God has called us specifically to this ministry, to be a watchman on the walls of Israel. God called me more than 40 years ago to, to be a watchman, to be a guardian mm-hmm. on the wall. And we just know that spiritual warfare is part of the territory. And so we embrace it and enjoy the light. Now, the scriptures are clear. To the Jew first will the gospel be preached, as I understand it. Yet in Israel, proselytizing is frowned upon, sometimes with great vitriol. That being said, Jonathan and Christine, how does one handle that? And what does one say or not? We're commanded to be witnesses part of being an evangelical Christian. But to be a witness doesn't mean you're going to proselytize. Proselytize means to force. And we are not in any sort of enforcement of the gospel. It's our privilege and honor to share the gospel. Because do you know that many people in the churches are not interested in Israel? They just act as if the church is going to last forever. Many pastors act as if there's no tomorrow, as if there's no second coming. But in fact, the church has a set time when it will be completed. The body of Messiah will be completed. And then God is going to up 
the nation of Israel again. And he's going to restore the kingdom. And we are living in a period of grace. The church is exploding. And the rising again of Israel is happening. Do you remember, uh, because we're coming close not only to Hanukkah, but also to when many people celebrate Christmas, when the angel of Gabriel came to Mary, one of the promises that he made to Mary, the mother of Jesus, was that God would give her son the throne of David. Well, now that hasn't happened yet, has it? But when Jesus comes a second time, that's when the throne of David will be restored to him. And so the church age is winding up, and Israel is rising again. Amen and amen. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to renowned Bible teacher and revivalist Christine Dark, founder of the Jerusalem Channel, and Jonathan Feldstein, founder of the Genesis 123 Foundation, their global Hanukkah prayer for Israel, celebrating the miracles, our topic of discussion today. Next question. Replacement theology has done a lot by all accounts to destroy the trust between Jews and Christians. Talk about the dangers of this type of theology and what you both are doing to dispel this false narrative. I I would say this with with tremendous humility as an Orthodox Jew, I feel terrible for my Christian friends who don't understand the Jewish roots of Christianity. I think think understanding that, embracing that, adds tremendous dimension to one's faith. So there are many, replacement theology is kind of like an onion, but there are many, many different levels of it. And you peel it back, and you peel it back, and eventually you're going to get to the middle, And, and but, but all those layers on top are, yes, of course, it's part of the onion, and maybe that's not such a great analogy, but but we need to, we need to remove those outer layers and go back. There's so much, and Christine and I have spent lots and lots of time talking about the commonalities that we have as Jews and Christians and where the, and where the rift that began with, with replacement theology uh, some 1,700 years ago um, uh, created a divide. Um, I would say most Jews don't know the phrase replacement theology. Um, sadly, most Jews look at Christians and Christianity as just not being Jewish and coming with baggage that, that is, is bound by all levels of replacement theology without knowing the, 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 the name. And I think the more we're able to pull back those layers and the more that we as Jews and Christians can focus on that which we have in common, we're, 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 we're ultimately uh, going to be a lot more uh, united. We're going to serve our God. And, 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 and I always actually hate it when people say that, our God, because he's the only God. And, I, and it's, there's not like another choice. Um, and, and we have to understand that, that we're the only people who do worship the Creator. And and these are all good enough reasons, whether replacement theology or, or proselytizing, we can put behind the differences and focus on that which we have in common. And Christine just made a wonderful uh, case for, for what's coming in the future, and we just need to work together to get there. That said... How important was the moving of the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem by President Donald J. Trump in 2018 to the reconciling of Jews and Christians? Your thoughts and how important is it that Trump stay in office for a second term or is it? God moved on Donald Trump during Hanukkah to recognize Jerusalem and move the United States Embassy to Israel's capital during that very significant time. And we have to see that when he officially recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital and moved that embassy, were these events connected? Was this just a coincidence? No. I believe that President Trump's proclamation was prophetic, and many Orthodox Jews believe this, of the rebuilding of the Third Temple, because we know it's going to happen. And many Bible students believe that he was acting uh, like a Cyrus, like a prophetic Cyrus, 
to mention in Isaiah chapter 45, and even President Trump is the 45th president of the United States. Mm. I believe it's very important that he stay in power because his mandate was not finished concerning the Abraham Accords and concerning all that he was doing with Jerusalem. And many prophetic voices have said that he will stay in office. Uh, and we believe that he was initiating moves of the Holy Spirit, that God was using him at this time to help fulfill Bible prophecy. So we are all very eagerly watching this space and praying. It's very strategic to have prayer at this moment when all of these uh, potentialities are converging. Amen and amen. Ladies and gentlemen, again, you're listening to renowned revivalist and founder of the Jerusalem Channel, Christine Darg, and Jonathan Feldstein, founder of the Genesis 123 Foundation, their collaboration in bringing the, quote, global Hanukkah prayer for Israel, celebrating the miracles. Jonathan, as an Orthodox Jew, what most do you value in your relationship with God and why? Wow, what a great question. Um, I value that I'm, I'm a descendant of Abraham and born into the covenant that God made with Abraham. I'm, I'm, I'm privileged and humbled that, that God gives me, through the Old Testament and Jewish teachings, the, the, uh, a pathway to, 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 to live, to behave, um, to... to correct course when I go astray, to have grace and, and uh, forgive my transgressions, and I'm human and I have more than my share, uh, and, and just, wow, and, and now, for the last 16 years living in Israel, raising my family in Israel, having a grandchild uh, born here and another one on the way next month, um, being able to have a, a, a front row seat in all of that that's unfolding here, and knowing that I'm not, well, actually, maybe that's also a bad analogy. I'm not a spectator. I'm a player. I'm here. I'm part of what God promised thousands of years ago. And, and that's humbling and, and awesome when I have the opportunity to actually think about it. So thank you for asking the question. Amen and amen. Now, Christine, one of my favorite scriptures is Daniel 11.32, which states, and I quote, Those that know their God shall be strong and do exploits, end quote. The foundational scripture for your ministry, as I understand it, talk about why you think more Christians are not walking in their God-given authority and doing the exploits that Jesus said, quote, we would do even greater. One of the reasons why we took that verse, Daniel, is to exhort others to do exploits. That's fascinating in the Hebrew. It doesn't use the exploits. That word was put in by the King James translators. It just says in Hebrew, the people who know their God will be strong, not we, and take action. And so the Lord is calling us, calling Jonathan, he's calling myself, to be strong in our faith, to have vision, to have faith, and to do whatever we find him to do with all of our might. And that is to pray during this festival of light at the moment, because Hanukkah is also known as the festival of light, that the light of the word of God will go forth from Jerusalem, that the word of the Lord will go forth from Jerusalem. And we are reminded that Jesus was born during the Feast of Tabernacles, according to many scholars. Not on that's what it's just an arbitrary date, but he was actually born, scholars say, during the Feast of Tabernacles. And that is so, then it was very likely that he was conceived in December during the Festival of Light, during Hanukkah, meaning that the light of the world was conceived and was incarnated and came into the world at that time. And so this is a great time for us to rise up and believe for spectacular breakthroughs for the light of God to rise and shine even though there's increasing gross darkness all around us and that his light will be a tremendous breakthrough 
in what I believe were these last days to see the tremendous finishing up of the church, uh, finishing up of the Gentiles being brought into the kingdom from every nation, and then Israel being restored to her rightful place in God's eyes, and, and the baton, as it were, being handed back to our patriarchs, the Jewish people. The very opposite of replacement theology. Mm -hmm. Amen and amen. Jonathan Feldstein, any remaining comments in our remaining moments? It's a privilege to be able to uh, to, to work with Christine. I'm, uh, I'm so grateful to you, Gentine, for giving us the opportunity to share uh, today and, uh, and certainly invite everyone to join us um, in the Global Hanukkah Prayer for Israel, uh, connecting through our website, genesis123.co, or on Genesis123 Foundation on Facebook and YouTube. And um, I, I, I pray that we will have a bigger and greater success than the one that we stumbled into last time, because now we're doing it purposefully. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to renowned revivalist, author, speaker, and award-winning journalist, founder of the Jerusalem Channel and Exploits TV, Dr. Christine Darg, in collaboration with Jonathan Feldstein, founder of the Genesis 123 Foundation and host sponsor of the Global Hanukkah Prayer for Israel. You can learn more about Jonathan and Christine's work, ministry, and mission by visiting genesis123.co and jerusalemchannel.tv as well as exploits.tv and get involved, support their work, and become a part of building bridges that bless Israel, its people, and the nation's of the world. You will be blessed. You did. Christine and Jonathan, truly, uh, it's such an honor to know you both, call you friends and co-laborers with Yeshua, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What a glorious collaboration, the Global Hanukkah Prayer for Israel, celebrating the miracles, being global cast December 2020 in celebration of the Jewish holidays and how we as Christians can pray, come alongside, and celebrate as well. It's been my great joy to help promote and be a part. We thank you, God bless you, and Happy Hanukkah. God bless you, thank you. Testimony is a global broadcast made possible by the generous contributions of our valued partners at Jensen Bard Ministries and you, our listening audience. Together, we are reaching souls for Christ, one testimony at a time. If you would like information on how you can support this broadcast with your tax-deductible gift, please visit us at jensenbard.com. That's one word, J-E-N-S-I-N-E-B-A-R-D.com. And join the conversation at our Facebook page, Testimony with Jensen Bard. Thank you for listening, and please join us again for Testimony.